Hello, I'm William Osman, and on today's episode of Crappy Science, we'll be biohacking a dog into a remote-controlled dog. As in, we'll use a remote to control a dog that we've biohacked. Dog. Don't worry, I won't be murdering my dog or cutting into him with a knife. Instead, we'll be doing the old donkey carrot stick trick, but with a wiener and some computer smartness. A motor will reorient the wiener depending on the data coming from the gyroscope sitting on this little platform. So with the remote control, you can change the position of the wiener, and when the dog turns, it'll try to hold the wiener in the same position. And hopefully, in the end, we can use our wiener to steer the dog. Uh, now it's time to cut the materials out on Retina Smelter 9000, my home-built 90 or 80 watt laser cutter. I don't actually know how much power it is. It's kind of uh, vague. Um, yeah, so let's do that. <laughs> Oh god. I haven't planned this out too well, so there's going to be some glue and nails and screws at some point. I don't exactly know when. Oops, I did it. Oh no, it's upside down. Good thing I didn't tighten that down. Right now, the big gear is in place, the uh, motor is mounted, oh, there's that screw, and we have to mount the limit switches, and then I gotta figure out how to mount the stick mount. We wanna take bets if this is just gonna totally fail. Who wants to bet against this? I bet for it working. No, I bet, cameraman, you wanna, you wanna take the bet that this isn't gonna work at all? Okay. Oh my god, this thing gets stuck. Bosch drill gets stuck. And when you just twist it a little bit... Oh, look at that, now it decides to work. Nice. The inaugural test. Inaugural. Inaug... Inaug... Oh my god. Inaugural. Inaugural? This thing has way more power than it should. Currently, we have a little doggy bio backpack that spins, has two limit switches which hit this screw right here. It's screwed in place so that when the uh, lever arm or when the, the bait arm is on there, it's not gonna rip the back out. <laughs> it might rip the back out, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. All that we need to do now is 90% of the project, which is the software. Beep boop, robot's done. It, it works. It works. Will it work on the dog? I have no idea. There are generator noises. It's not our generator. We just found a really bright light in a hospital parking lot. So sorry for the, the banding it might cause and the noise it causes. Oh, he's here. Oh. <sighs> what do you do with your degree you got in expensive school? I make wiener flinging robots. In case you aren't clear on what this actually does, it keeps the hot dog dangling right in front of the angle you want to make the dog drive. So if the dog turns left, it moves the hot dog right. If the dog turns right, it moves the hot dog left. When you adjust the remote control, it changes the angle you want the hot dog to be at, or the direction you want the dog to turn. Or if this doesn't work at all, just where the hot dog's dangling in front of the dog's face. Get the hot dog, Barkley. Okay, look at the hot dog. Get it. <laughs> Man, it's supposed to go forward. <laughs> this needs to be like farther in front of him. Barkley, come on. Hey, hey, come on. No, shoot. Oh, yeah. 
Let me get the rubber band off of it at least. <sighs> what do we call this? Why did I think he was gonna go forward? And why did he actually go up? This, this shows promise. He's gonna impale somebody with that thing. Day two of testing, and uh, I realized this video is kind of a hot mess. We haven't gone over the electronics at all, so let's do that really quick. There's a 12 volt LiPo battery. So what happens is the IMU sends angle data to the microprocessor. The microprocessor uses a PID control loop to determine how much power to give to the motor to get the motor to go where you want to go. If that control loop is not tuned properly, this is what it looks like. Insert footage here right now, William, good. And when it's tuned properly, you don't get any of that wobbling or anything. It just goes where it needs to go as quickly as possible, or relatively quick. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. Uh, so let's, let's test the modifications that were made. Um, I put a longer stick on it to get the hot dog further in front of the dog, and I lowered the angle as much as I could so that the hot dog doesn't hang as high up in front of him. And hopefully, we can get him to go forward instead of up. <laughs> What are you looking at? Using a rubber band to grab the hot dog seems to be the best solution. The string by itself is too tight and you end up sort of cutting the hot dog in half. Are you, are you messing with it? Don't do that. Okay. God. Foxy, look up. What are you doing? Go left. Maybe if I dangle it in front of his face. <laughs> yeah, we gave him a piece. Will you do it for me? I tried. Well, uh, I'm not sure if that was success or failure. I'm leaning more towards failure, so. Cameraman John, I think you won whatever we had bet, which I don't think we actually clarified. So you won the bet, you don't win anything though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need a better dog. Maybe we need a better robot. Good news is he got a bunch of hot dogs. And a special thanks to Cameron Essikoff for sending this horrendous cat shirt. I'm gonna be all itchy, this is a bad idea.